me tell you about Nebraska. Um, never mind. On this episode of The Dane and the Pain, we get rehabilitated with IoT. For once, someone has invented a device that is connected to the internet, and it actually makes sense. Shock! Horror! We also look at more brilliant Romanian innovation for monitoring silos, and then more robots. Brought to you from Geosynchronous Orbit and a whole bottle of rum. Recording again, Joe. Wee! Welcome, little listeners, to the show where the fertile ground of ideas is the cerebral cortex of the hosts. Um, welcome to uh, to this episode, which um, for once I actually might have some useful stuff in it. What do you reckon, Joe? I, uh, I I always love there's. Have you ever watched the movie Raising Arizona? Uh, I know the title. I can't Nic- tell for, for Nic- with Nicholas Cage. Anyways, he's got a line in there where he says something. To the effect that uh, her her uh, her bosom or no her yeah was a uh, was a barren plain where my seed could find no purchase, and I kind of feel like that way with ideas <laughs> in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I have not. There I is not no that quote. Well, you need to. Uh, I probably butchered it, but if you ever, well, I mean, the movie is not for everybody, uh, but it is for me, and I can watch it any time. And I can quote from it, but I'll spare you that. So, because I know we got cool stuff to talk about this week. We do, we do. Um, just what, yeah. Before we start, I, uh, I, I finally kind of half killed my phone. I dropped it on our driveway, and uh, it, you know, the screen went in many pieces. It still works, um, and I still can use all the features. Nothing functional is broken, but uh, I'm not kind of really. Um, quite heavily considering getting another phone. And I've been looking at Android phones um, a lot. Uh, and, and then, um, yeah, I know, dear listeners, you're not going to believe this, but I'm actually considering another Windows phone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I actually, I've been talking to a guy about getting a, a 950XL, buying it from him. Um, I don't, I mean... Uh, yesterday, I think 10 hours ago, something like that, there were positions posted uh, by Microsoft for Windows Mobile. You know, oh, so. I, I mean, this wasn't part of the, the show that we were going to record, but let me just uh, comment no. on it, that there are there are actually, um, there are pushes made for enterprise in particular to use Windows Mobile, um, Windows 10 Mobile, because the, the, the fact is that it is a good device. Like now, consumers don't like it because there's no apps. Um, you know, it, it doesn't come in red for an extra two hundred dollars or whatever it is that you might want. Um, but the actual OS and the features on it and the integration with enterprise systems, especially Office three six five, which is you know going leaps and bounds, is really good. Um, so HP of um, is probably the main player right now has this Elite X three, which is an enterprise device. And I had a demo of it last week, and uh, I walk into the room and I'm talking to these to this guy from HP, and the first thing he does with his uh, his phone, and this is a large, it's essentially a phablet, it's a large smartphone. He just throws it over his shoulder onto the floor, <laughs> and I was like, "Have it, hey!" Uh, and um, and he says that he does it all the time, like like you know, for good luck or something with a salt taker or. Is no, he was trying luck? to. He, um, little... <laughs> he was making a point out of the. Uh, he called it over-engineered American hardware, um, because oh, it's it is really good hardware. So it didn't break. I'm assuming <laughs> that's no, it. <laughs> no, it did but not. the one that you had did break. Well, I did. Well, it, you know, it, it fell on the corner on asphalt yeah. on our driveway, yeah. and I, I, it's not going to survive that. Did you? How did you say? Can you pronounce that again? Asphalt. You, bitumen. That just sounds wrong. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm not sure. I because asphalt. W- well, in the states, asphalt. Mm. 
Well, we mostly we call it felt. I guess one, one, yeah, wait a second. One's, one's past and one's, uh, you know, past tense and pretense. But... Oh, this particular driver is past tense very much. Um, but, uh, but you know what? I was going to tell you. Show, that, no, no one, one other quick thing in, in case anybody sees, you know, because I know some folks, depending on the Twitter, uh, you know, uh, Twitter uh, app they use. Uh, you can see which uh, mobile device or device people are posting from. And uh, I was going to tell you, my son, my oldest son, uh, got an Android device. And to be frank, I don't even know what it is. But if you ever see something from me, folks, posted from Android, it's because of that. Um, he, By the way, he doesn't like it. But that's, anyways, that's beside the point. So yeah, um, the invasion well, has begun. Yeah, the, well, the beauty of Android is that there are so many devices. And the really, really, really stupid thing about Android is that there are so many devices, right? You know, it's it's both yeah. good and evil because it's as especially as an he, app developer. Was... I've done talks on this. As an app developer, how the hell are you going to test on twenty five thousand different devices? You're not. Um, so you will have a degraded experience on some devices. That's just how it is. But you have a lot of choice, and they're cheap, and they're really good. So yeah, there you go. Anyways, what were we going to talk about? Well, the first thing is is well, actually, all three things today is something that you've uh, you've found on your travels through the interwebs to the bits and bytes and tubes that are the Alaskan uh, broadband, and um, the first thing is uh, <laughs> is something that you uh, it's it's reflex help is the website, and it's I'm intrigued. So it's a hardware item, but it has motion tracking sensors on this sort of braces that you put on legs or arms and then they track your motions for rehabilitation so the tagline mm-hmm. is motion tracking sensors that enable your patients to finish their last stage of the physical rehabilitation at home but still under your team supervision so you can actually have you know it's an iot device essentially and you use it at home and the data is sent to whoever is monitoring your rehabilitation so in one of my former lives, I worked um, in a, what, what we would call an occupational medicine practice or uh, for folks who got injured on the, on the job. And, um, you know, you, you, there's these sort of standard protocols for therapy after an injury, knee injury, shoulder, whatever. And you'd send people to see the therapist. They would, you know, go so many times and they would disappear into the nether realms. You know, therapists, people would always be asking, have you been doing your exercises? Have you been doing this? And there's really no way, you know, that you can independently verify that. And why I thought this was really cool is that, um, first of all, I've not seen widespread use of anything like this in the States, or at least not where I'm at. Uh, there might, I'm sure there are probably places down south, uh, lower 48, where there is. But this was in uh, Romania, where this company was uh was at i believe and um so it got me kind of thinking about it a couple different ways first of all how cool is that so that you could actually follow somebody through and see if your uh if either the set of set of exercises you're giving them is working if they're actually doing it all those things and even if it was uh it well if it was a work entry that would be great for an employer or an insurance company because they they have got act tangible real um uh, results, um, but then also in a private practice or someone who just is injured and needs to get better, it's a good way for the doctor to reinforce or physician to reinforce the behavior they want in a patient. But it occurred to me that um, w- when I was reading this, it, you know, it's really hard in a country or in a place like the U.S. I think often to get a device or idea like this. Um, you know, up on its feet, pardon the expression, and running. Um, the The market here is so saturated and there's such a vested interest in certain types of, uh, of uh, businesses, i.e. like rehab, physio, uh, physical therapy practices, that um, replacing them, you have to sort of really upend the whole industry but in smaller markets, now Romania is not a small country, uh, 20 odd million people, um, you have the opportunity to do that. I don't know. 
No, I, I, I can certainly see it used in that uh, scenario as well. But um, living where I am, I, I see other benefits as well because rural Australia is very rural. Like we, we have places that are <laughs> out the back of beyond, the, the right? mostly rural. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, it, it kind of goes city, <laughs> suburb, um, outer suburbs, rural, outback. Right? And if you live in the outback, that means you are a uh-huh. bloody long way away. And if, uh, especially yeah. if you have farms, so some of the farms in Australia are enormous, right? They're the size of states in, in America, some of them. And um, it might be Delaware, it might be uh, might be Ohio, I'm not sure. But <laughs> we have some very, so very large properties. And the if go- your spleen the grows, like, well, if, you're, if, 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 you yeah. get a, if you blow up your spleen, you're probably going to make it. But if you're in the outback, eh, you're probably going to die. Well, that's the problem, isn't it? That um, I mean, for many years we've had a service here called the Royal Frying Doctors Service, um, the RFDS, and they do an amazing job. They actually fly out um, and pick up people and fly back to hospitals, and we have really good helicopter services as well. So if you live where we are, we're t- a couple of hours from the nearest large city. Um, there's a lot of touristy places around here, and and we have you know dedicated heli pads in town just because of. Uh, bushfires is one but also because of medical emergencies so i Mm. see this product here with you know long distance rehabilitation as as a benefit to people that do live very far away and they might have a three-hour drive to go see the doctor or you know or half day drive and they can instead use this because most properties do have some sort of internet connection Um, that's also why we have school of the air Um, so we have you know, classrooms that are purely based on Skype just for kids that yeah. live out on these very, very remote properties. So I see it because there are accidents on these properties as well. They're farms. You know, it's it's not always a, sur- a safe workplace. So they will need rehabilitation. And I could imagine this would be a much quicker way of getting rehabilitated in a very controlled manner. So I think it's a great product. Well, in areas of Australia where the drop by our problem has not been um, addressed, I could see where this would be a huge benefit. Yeah, but you'd need more Vegemite for that. You just smear it up behind your ears and you'd be good. You know, that's a bit of a tourist trip there for you. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I couldn't, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, well, you know, the other area, the there's, well, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of other... Areas where I, you know, sort of this remote monitoring, in particular for me in the states, um, you know, the most dangerous place to be is in the hospital when it comes to acquired um, acquired infection. <laughs> for and, sure, yeah. You know, you, you, you well, it is. So you don't want to be there unless you absolutely have to. But uh, my thought was, gosh, if they could come up with a way, a really good way to um, monitor for infection when you're outpatient post surgically. And, and report this that information back. And I'm not exactly certain how that would be, if it would be a, a patch or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it, because to me, that's where you, that's where the most expense is, at least in our, a lot of our, in our healthcare system is with these acquired infections and readmissions into hospitals um, after the fact, um, or if people are getting IV therapies on an outpatient basis. I know we're not talking about this specific product, but I think this is this is sort of points the direction of where you'll see more and more of what in the past you might have you know perceived as care taking place at home. And and to be and to be honest, people are get better faster at home. Oh, I, t- I totally believe that as well. Absolutely, get people out of hospitals. Well, not only because they get better at home quicker, but also because, well, it's expensive having people in hospitals and people rather be yeah. at home and you need the bed for someone else, right? Yeah, somebody who's, you know, critically ill. Absolutely. Mm. Mm. But I, I do, I did want to like just underscore that I really think that it's re- I mean, some of these ideas that you, that we'll talk about, it's really hard in, in markets where it's already sort of heavily saturated in there's in, in, in a, a real um, sort of overbearing, you know, industry, um, which isn't, you know, you could look at, you know, the iPhone or, you know, any kind of these major technologies that have saturated um, and to, you know, to get in as a new player and to innovate becomes, you know, really hard. So go to these smaller countries and look for ideas. That's where the innovation, I think, is 
uh, taking place, at mm -hmm. least on the you know on the ground. Um, anyways, I'll get off my high horse there. <laughs> no, is I mean I'm so glad when I see an IoT device that's not connecting your toothbrush or your hairbrush to the internet or your light bulb. Or, you know, some of these things that we just kind of go, yeah, that's neat, but we don't really need it. Um, this this yeah. particular idea and product is just so beneficial in so many ways. Yeah, and actually, I have a, I don't know why I have this interest in Romania. I think it's a little bit like my weird interest in Turkey, and in that you know Romania has has is sort of um, came out of such a sort of a closely held sort of history for in, in recent history, anyways. And then you know nothing was sort of happening there, and then all of a sudden people have some freedom. And, um, you know, there's been some steps backward, but what you see is real organic growth and a real entrepreneurial spirit, at least what I read. Obviously, I haven't been over there. Um, that was all closed, closed off when I was in Europe. So, um, yeah, I would, you know, I'd encourage people to, to go and research and look in Romania because there's really interesting things happening there. I, I agree. I was invited to a conference in Romania, actually, in Bucharest. Um, unfortunately, mm. they couldn't afford to pay for flights from Australia, which is fair enough. Um, they were very upfront about it. And if it had fitted in with, um, with some other engagement in Europe, I probably would have gone there. It was uh, yeah, a few yeah. thousand people. It was a big event. So, um, yeah, I think there's really interesting stuff coming out of, of the old Eastern Bloc in Europe for sure. All right. <clears throat> let's uh, let's Lars, talk agriculture, sorry, there's, shall we? There's a yeah, there's a cat outside. If I get distracted, I don't know why there's a cat, and I haven't been able to find this little bastard running around our house yelling out in the woods. <laughs> well, I've got a cat drinking out of my pool right now. Oh, the, the pool that you have full of acid. That's really nice of you. I know, I know. It's, uh, we, <laughs> we, uh, we monitor the feral population of cats. That now it's it's my own cat. He's an idiot. I don't know why he drinks out the pool. There's fresh water in the bowl inside him. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, what was the, yeah, what was anyways. the next week? No, <laughs> he's a he's a he's a fifteen pound cat, so he's a big boy. Um, I am um, a fifteen pound cat. Yeah, he's seven kilos. He's good lord. That's th what are you feeding him? Our cat's maybe five pounds. I know, and he's, he's not fat. Wet. He's really lean. He's just a big kitty. Um, well, <laughs> enough, of enough about your cat. Enough about felines. <laughs> I, uh, you found this really interesting, um, well, to some people it might be interesting because it's agriculture, um, and it's, it's another IoT device, and it's, um, well, short story, it's a silo meter, it's a silo monitoring system, but the reason, again, I thought it was interesting is that I, I used to live on a farm in Canada, and I've, uh, I've worked with a guy that owned a farm, a really large farm in Australia, so I do have some little tiny bit of insight into this, um, and actually, one of my really good friends is an ex-chicken farmer. And he always had this problem um, of monitoring the inside climate of, so in this case, it was sheds, not just the silos, um, because mm -hmm. the weather in Australia is so up and down. Like we can have, you know, 40 degrees or 110 Fahrenheit one day, and then next day it will be, not next day, but, you know, a couple months later it will be freezing. Um, so anything that can sort of implement better monitoring and better adjustment and and management of these things is a good thing. And this particular thing you found is silometer.com and it's temperature, aeration um, uh, monitoring, and it prevents condensation, which is a big thing in silos. You don't want moisture in there. Um, and what I thought was particularly interesting with this is that it actually hooks up to, your, to a weather uh, service and then automates most of these things based on what the weather is going to be. And um, so especially something like aeration, you know, how much air do you need to let in in order to let condensation out, get moisture out, all that stuff. Um, it does that more or less automatically. And I think this is a great way of uh, improving our food production without doing much, really. Yeah, and the idea is, is not new as far as trying to you know automate ways at least in larger farms. No, to, no, not to, at all. To do that, but the, but if you think you know think of beyond you know just say agriculture, um, and we've talked that my brother has a, a, a 
value-added wood pro products business, and he creates wood pellets um, for um, people to burn to heat their homes. Uh -huh. And uh, and he doesn't have anything like this on. Now, he doesn't own the silos uh, at, at the business he sells to, but um, it occurred to me um, after reading that is that this would be a great sort of value-added part of his business model is that if you could um, ensure, you know, let your you know, customers know that you are going to monitor their silo and you are going to ensure that the temperature was correct or the, more importantly, the, the humidity was correct uh, with, uh, with wood pellets, um, that would be a huge selling point. And then obviously if it's automated, you know, for, for the sloths in us, all of us, it's, that's awesome because then all you have to do is look for exceptions uh, and make sure the equipment is working, which sounds easy, I, of course, but I obviously isn't. But again, this is an idea. Uh, this is an idea uh, from a small company um, in Eastern Europe, um, you know, and not, uh, you know, some, you know, ginormous, you know, multinational company, uh, easily scalable and something you can do. You know, in your if you're in a you know market that's you know sort of limited in scope by either by by geography or uh, you know or or you know whatever you you could uh -huh. use it. You could use it uh, in fisheries here, commercial fisheries, for monitoring the the water temperature in your holding tanks. Oh, for sure. And um, it's um you probably didn't want to monitor humidity there though. But anyway, um I think yeah, uh... <laughs> <laughs> that might be a little redundant. <laughs> It, but yeah, it, it, it's another Romanian product, and it just shows that it doesn't matter where you are from, right? If you have a great idea, and this, it is a really simple, basic product because it does one thing, but it integrates with everything else that you might have already on the silo. And I think that's a really important point. As we, and this is kind of like how I like to build software. Um, a lot of developers are always going, "Oh, well, I could build that better," or oh, well, "My system is much, much more gooder." And uh, my approach usually is, well, you've got something that works. Why are we going to replace it? As old as it is or as wonky and you know, patched up as it is, why are we trying to replace something that does actually work? Why would you spend money on that? As a business proposition, that doesn't make sense. So instead, let's try and value add and maybe change some of the bits so they're more maintainable, more robust, whatever it might be. And this is kind of the approach they're doing. Is they're saying, well, you already got all this equipment on your silos in this case. We're not going to replace all that, but we're going to add this extra thing that's going to make you more money because your the quality of your your grain or whatever you put in the silo is going to be better. So I really quite appreciate it. Is by the way, Lars, is gooder a cheese? Oh, uh, that's Gouda. <laughs> yeah. Not to be confused I, with Gouda. I heard. Well, I heard that word and I thought, did he just make up a word? <laughs> I did. It is much more that's good. We should we should we shouldn't use that on the on the intro or the promo for the show. It's gooder than you expect, or something to that effect. Yeah, I yeah. think um, also just just in waste to um, you know you, you if you get and my my family's background is in raising cattle on my dad's side, and on my mom's side, I feel far far enough back it's raising sheep, raising sheep, and. Uh, if you get mold and feed, um, that's you can kill your livestock, <laughs> you know. So oh, yeah. I mean, there's oh, just sure. so, there's so many real good reasons uh, to uh, to look at this. And actually, I was thinking it it'd be kind of fun to do a contest, even if it was just a uh, hypothetical, to come up with the best idea for remote monitor. Um, you know, what is the most outrageous, funniest thing that you could use? remote monitoring like this for um because some you know you it, you know sometimes the, the best way to get a good idea is to think about the most outlandish idea and then as you do that go through that process you actually you know actually stumble upon something mm -hmm. you know just just by allowing yourself that freedom well that's kind Anyways, of how they I'm, make cars I'm, isn't it like the, the car uh, industry is is showing us these prototypes, which is essentially a one-off car built by someone that had a, a vision and an idea. And it never, ever is the car that goes into production because it's not feasible. But it does move forward the benchmark of what is possible. So, uh, yeah, I completely agree. If you come up with an idea that sounds ridiculous, but if you can kind of you know, prove that it could work, then other really good things are going to come out of it. 
So that's what we're attempting to do here, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. laughs> <Not> exactly. <laughs> Except for I think we're moving the bar back. <laughs> yeah. Go. Well, the one listener that's left still likes my jokes, you know. I can't be wrong. Uh, you know what? Don't believe the lies. <laughs> uh, I think we'll nice. never lose a joke of the week. So uh, what was next? Is there anything else? <laughs> that you had to, that you wanted to talk about? Well, I want to talk about robots. Uh, you know, you always bring up robots. I think this mm. is probably the third time, third different show where you've. I think you have a thing. Yeah, but it's it's robots. A, a thing for robots. <laughs> but it's, it's robots. It is now, a so, robot. So at Christmas we gave. Uh, our 11 year old um or gave i, I partly gave because i want to retain some ownership of it um <laughs> we gave him a, a, a cosmo robot uh and cosmo is this little fist-sized robot i think we talked about about it before on the show and you control it with an app on an android or ios device and cosmo has a lot of very clever things about it so he can lift things it, it's kind of like a forklift robot but he has this screen on him where you know just very simple or oh, let's say 100 by 200 pixel screen that only has one color. But this is his face. And the expression on this face is just all over. Like He does so many expressions and he, re he reacts to your face because he does facial recognition. So he can say your name and he knows who plays with him the most. And, you know, it's really clever. He learns about his environment. He can see where things are. He can have these, he has these three blocks that comes with him that he controls via Bluetooth connection. Um, and you can play games with him with the blocks, you know, tap the blocks or stack the blocks and all these sort of things. And it's really engaging. And it's, he has personality. You know, like if you beat him in a game, he'll have a little hissy fit and, you know, run off and turn his back to you. And like, it's just really, really well done. And the cool thing is that you can actually program it with very simple Python. You, there's a developer mode, and you can build your own games, and you can build your own things and control them uh, in the environment that you're in. So uh, you found this other robot that, because Cosmo is kind of more aimed at maybe, say, the 10-year-old and above, um, but you found mm -hmm. a, uh, something called Woogie, uh, Woogie.ai, and it's an educational robot for kids. Um and he also has built-in sensors, and he uh, has personality, and he engages children uh, as well. And like six to twelve year old is what they're aiming at. Um, and the idea with Woogie is that he teaches your kids um, to interact. Right? It's um, he can do interactive learning so that you can, um, you know, give him challenges, qu quizzes, riddles, you know, games, all this kind of interaction to get your kids to engage with something and learn from it and i think this is you know as much as people would say oh but this is you know why you're not just doing parenting things this is part of what kids like you know it's a modern society robots is part of what is you know has always been attractive when robots have been around so um i like wookie yeah i um i you know we talked at a length about uh the dangers of or you know what the impact that the use of technology has on little kids and and little and robot-esque type toys or things have been a fascination you know in the states anyways at least that i can look back into like the 50s and 60s so but what this is is um you know this is another sort of iteration i do think it's interesting wasn't there uh, just a whole some company that made little toy robots that had you know, several million recalled because they're all the kids, their parents' emails were stolen or something like that. And I hadn't even thought about oh, that when I suggested yes. this. Yes, uh, yeah. So there was <laughs> yeah, this. Um, so the Troy that was on the show, Troy Hunt, he uh, he kind of actually broke this story. So they're teddy bears, and they have there's an IoT device again. So via an app, you can send. Uh, voice messages to this bear so that if you're a parent and you're away you can then send a voice message through the bear to a kid you could also just ring him but anyway um and then the uh, the bear says this voice message and it's all very cute and you set up an app and you you know, log in and whatnot and then 
the kid can then press the bear's paw or something and record a message to, to go back. So you have this sort of communication channel. However, all of the uh, data, <laughs> the database were publicly available. Like you, it was just on the internet and you could access this database. Which meant, of course, that it was stolen. It was then uh, crypto locked so that someone said, hey, we've got your database. If you want it back, you're going to pay us money. And it always went downhill from there. So yes, um, <laughs> there are some issues with uh, things that record your children and your children's details um, because I would seriously consider getting anything that would have to do that. This is not the case with Cosmo or Wiggy. This is purely a, yeah, a robot say, that interacts, right? Yeah, thanks for clarifying that. Woogie is, um, <laughs> and again, this, so this, the, there's a theme here, folks. You know, this is an, a product design made uh, in Eastern Europe. And so this is, you know, something that is, you know, not really cutting edge necessarily, but as far as toys go, uh, it, it is. And, um, and in, a, in a relatively small market. Um, and I'm sure that some of the parts and stuff are sourced uh, from Eastern or uh, from Asia or other countries. But um, I think this is really sort of encouraging to me anyways, to see this sort of stuff developed, you know, um, in other places. And maybe that's just the U.S. centric part of me. Um, but I, you know, it, I was surprised to see that particular product coming from that part of the world um, I would have thought it all would have been imported and resold um, you know like the iPhone is in the States but I don't have a lot of interest or patience for for robots <laughs> like this is a, a UK product though, as far as I can tell I, I, I I'm sorry I was thinking it was out of yeah I'm you know maybe I have it confused or I was just wrong which is more <laughs> that's likely. all right. I thought I'd just clarify. Um, no, so, so Wookie, you can't buy mind. Wookie yet. You can buy Cosmo uh, from Anki, which is the company. Um, but it, I just, I think I should you work, just clarify. Do you that. work for Cosmo? You, <laughs> no, I was gonna say, no. You, you, you really like that thing. I do. I think he's brilliant. He's a really, really well designed device. Um, but this Wookie. So Cosmo, is, folks, if you're listening, send Lars a free one. There you go. <laughs> yeah, Cosmo needs a playmate. Yes. Um, <laughs> Woogie is <laughs> is made for parents, right? So it's, I'm just reading through a bit of the site here, and it's y your kid will ask Woogie questions. So that's the idea, so that your your kid will uh, will interact with Woogie. Woogie then c uh, records what kind of categories of of data that your kid is asking about. You know, is it you know, is it sports? Is it arts? Is it what religion? Uh, maybe not history. <laughs> okay, yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's um, right. Yeah, that's right. Let's, and let's uh, have a religion test built and in. And you can actually <laughs> tailor that content then, so that you then, as a parent, you set up Wookie to say, "Hey, it's going to be more history skewed, or he's going to do more maths questions, or things though that you have essentially a little helper that <laughs> helps you guide your child to whatever it is that they're interested in." Um, so he asks questions, he answers them, and it just it uh, it. It's a cute little face on him, and um, it's. Uh, I'm not sure how it's going to work exactly. There's no videos of it that I can find, but it is an interesting way of engaging with your child um, through, rather than just a smartphone where they sit and press a button. This is an interaction, right, with a, with a little robot. Well, and we'll have a link, the correct link, on our uh, site with the show notes. Uh, and speaking of which. We do have um, a link on our website. Uh, if you're so inclined, um, it takes a lot of money to pay Lars to do what he does and to uh, maintain the site in our vast worldwide network. And uh, so any support you can provide would really be appreciated. And of course, uh, you can check us out on YouTube. And um, if, <laughs> if you really do go on Facebook, we have a Facebook page. We do indeed. Um, yeah, thanks for mentioning that, Joel. Most of that will go to my uh, my hairstylist, though. Ah, yes, something I don't uh, don't don't can't be bothered to have actually. <laughs> <laughs> A little uh, less less so every year. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah.
And what else? Okay, is, we'll I think actually, do we have any? I think we have uh, look for a guest coming this Sunday. Well, we this won't be this Sunday. It'll be two. So look, look for a guest two Sundays ago. I'm trying to think how you even do that. How do you plug a guest that's going to be on the show <laughs> when the show's not going to be released for three weeks? Well, so this show is going to be released on uh, the 10th of April, my time, or the 9th of April, your time. But next Sunday, from when we're recording it, so that's the 26th or 27th, and so two weeks ago, as you said. <laughs> wow, that's confusing, isn't it? So if you're listening to this show and you didn't listen to episode 33, which we haven't released yet at time recording, then you can go back and listen to episode 33, which has Carly Hunt on it. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes, it is exactly what I'm trying to say. <laughs> a delightful, delightful... Uh... A guest and um, uh, made, kind of made my day talking to her. To be honest, um, yeah. So I we're at the point where you probably could do the joke of the day. Is it that time? You want me to say that, to tell the joke? No, I didn't say that. I just thought that's probably the best way to get this over with. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, today I have a um, a, a six minute monologue, which no, I don't. Um, you are absolutely right. It is time for the joke of the week. It's the joke of the week. So come along with me. I cannot promise it will be funny, but it's the joke of the week. So uh, what do you get when you cross a robot and a tractor? A robot and a tractor. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. You get a transformer. Oh, God. <laughs> that could be taken so many different ways, too, unfortunately. <laughs> this is true. It's a great joke. See? <laughs> That's not bad. Remind <laughs> me sometime to talk to you about my cousin John that sells Licky Licks. <laughs> I'm He's, intrigued he now. Works in Yes, Can we bring him I on will. as a he guest? In... Can we have a whole At... show with Cousin John? Absolutely. He's from Gordon, Nebraska, the nicest guy you'd ever meet, and sells lickety licks. Hang and on. Isn't I'll everybody in Nebraska really nice? Like, I can't imagine anyone no. from Nebraska not being nice. No, I, we lived in Omaha for a couple of years, and uh, my wife is from there, and um, there are some people there that are not particularly nice. Yeah, but it's it just like again. anywhere else. I just watched that Nebraska's, movie Nebraska. That was that was hilarious. And the the rural part of Nebraska is just yeah, people are are uh, pretty pretty good natured. Anyways, on Anyways. that note, Lars, uh, look forward to talking in the future. And uh, everybody, make sure to go check out our website. And uh, if you can, uh, throw us a few dimes your way or our way, and uh, we'll uh, we'll keep uh, keep on putting out a show for you. Thanks. Sounds good. All right. See you, mate. Thank you for listening in on another episode of The Day in the Pain. We record across the Pacific, across hemispheres, and across time zones. You can find us on www.daneandthepain.com. Our Twitter handle is Dane underscore pain, and we are The Dane and the Pain on YouTube and Facebook. We're also on your favorite podcast app, including iTunes, and please join our fan club by clicking the Register Now button on our website to know about upcoming shows and any free stuff we may have to share. See you next time on The Dane and the Pain. <laughs>